Mary Bell Kirshner, better known as Belle Delphine, is a notorious online creator who has attracted both praise and criticism for her antics across the internet. She has been accredited as one of the people to popularise the e-girl aesthetic and is undoubtedly a cultural phenomenon. News publications have branded her both a troll and performative artist, and for others, she is an icon for a new form of expression. After birthing the Gamer Girl bathwater, she has launched herself into the adult industry, expanding her internet empire. Along the way, many other popular internet figures have associated with her, and they have coexisted in a mutually beneficial relationship. She's bandering, she's bandering. I don't even want, I don't even know where it is, but I don't want to be near it. How, I cannot believe what I'm hearing. For some reason, that's that's absolutely baffled me. We, the other two that we spoke to about this, they were like, "Yeah, it's not a, it's not real blood." Like, it's not. <laughs> have you heard them say that? <laughs> I don't know how much of this is a character. You've got to be whacking the head to do this. Cross-platform influence is crucial in building an online identity, and being able to expand into different markets is vital for the longevity of internet relevance. Bell's tactics are effective. And time again, she has proven to make virality work in her favour. From controversial photo shoots to embracing the support of otherwise disconnected communities and not shifting her boundaries to appease the crowd. She isn't afraid to stick her head out of the window. And it has so far proven to do her very well. The thing is with the internet, I'm on the same track as everyone else. I enjoy fun stories. I enjoy fun videos, even if they're fake. If it's like the hype around it. It's good press. It's always good press. Yeah, yeah. Let people indulge in this like stupid storyline that I sent someone to hospital for a day. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, so I just let that happen. And then after a week, I was like, by the way, it's not real. However, being prone to controversy, it's inevitable that her name trends every week, which draws certain comments that are often echoed around different social media. The problem is the accuracy of these claims, so much so that it's hard to determine fact from fiction and whether people are spreading the truth or just baseless rumours. But it's clear that beyond her controversial nature, there is something else that makes people strongly dislike her. So I've made it our task to interrogate this and strip it down to its core sources to have a clear understanding of why this is the case. Then we can accurately judge Belle Delphine's character and decide if she is just a misunderstood performer or an extremely problematic individual. At just 17 years old, Belle was already engaging with the world of lewd content, something now prevalent with younger people online. When she was most actively selling nudes, Hannah had a huge following across social media. So how much money were you making at that point? At that point, I was making like 15,000 to 20,000 a month. And how old were you? 16. Really? Yeah. How old were you, were you when you started gaining followers? 15. Yeah, 14 turning 15. So do you think those people didn't realise that you were underage at the time? No, a lot of them did, because a lot of them know me, like, personally. So a lot of them were, like, actually 15, 16, 17, 18, that kind of age group. A lot of my buyers are that age group just because it's my fan base. Belle's entry into this part of the internet was slightly different and very controversial. It involves the theft of other women's content and the direction of an elaborate catfishing scheme by a man who she refuses to name. This happened in late 2017, before her popularity. It wasn't until a year later it became mainstream knowledge, and is possibly where confusion in the story lies. 
One person to speak out about this was Indigo White, a very popular adult content creator who released a video discussing her reasons for disliking Belle as well as explaining what had happened back in late 2017. Within this video, she also included the thoughts of the key girl affected. Her name is Minty. Minty had publicly criticised Belle in September of 2018 after finding out about the catfishing. However, the post was removed and she received a DM from Belle. Within, she tried to apologise for what she did after going through her story for why it happened. Belle explained some random man she would later befriend had approached her with a plan to make easy money, and as a strapped for cash teenager, she would begrudgingly accept this offer. From what I can tell, the scheme was a simple catfish. They would use Belle's Facebook account to set the bait for potential buyers. Then, once the prospective client was in the DMs and had handed over a sum of money through PayPal, they were served some stolen content. The only side of this story we have is Belle's, and she insists this only happened for three months at most before she stopped working with the man because she grew suspicious of him. Her story is she didn't engage in any of the activities, she merely allowed this man to use her account to execute the money making scheme. If this is the case and she's telling the truth, then she technically didn't participate in what happened. But she did allow it to go ahead and receive the profits from this man's supposed actions, so she is very much an accomplice to what took place. This situation involves a mix of legal and moral implications, with the most prevalent being the copyright infringement involved in the sale of other women's lewd pictures. However, the likelihood of litigation for copyright is minimal unless someone really wanted to make a statement. It's costly, time consuming, and would end up being a waste of money. For the catfishing element, there's not a lot that can be done either. There's always an element of another crime mm -hmm. that is involved in that lying by itself is not a crime. Do we really want a society to, to, to create a new crime which is lying? At this point, I don't think legal action will ever come from this. It's historical and it isn't something she continued to do. But on the other hand, the morality of doing this is more than relevant, as well as how she acted throughout the situation, from the conception of the scheme up until the point people began to talk about it and even beyond. The way she behaved and her response to the criticism is concerning, and her lack of accountability accountability for letting this happen is a problem. The closest she has ever come to publicly acknowledging her actions was in the interview with Kat for the Insider article. Even then, it doesn't go as far as what people have learned from the DMs revealed during the 2019 callout. What's even more concerning is the man who approached her with this scheme is still out there because, according to Belle, she wasn't the only one he had done this with. I had people like that reaching out to me when I was younger. I, I was like kind of semi-popular on like Tumblr when I was younger, like underage. And I had people like that reached out to me all the time, constantly. So I'm sure she did too. I saw those people and I was like, ew, you're creepy, you're a pedophile, like go away. I, I would never like consider like working with them. You know, it feels like a pretty obvious like block that person. <laughs> His goal was to get her to do sexual stuff. And that's the that's what grooming is. Why is everyone protecting this guy? <laughs> like, yes, we can focus on Belle all we want, but I would really rather focus on that guy. Like, expose him, admit you did it, apologize, and we'd all be on your side. <laughs> now, whether Belle feels remorse for what she did is questionable, as she wasn't entirely kind to Minty. When shit eventually hit the fan, Belle had gone ahead and contacted her to see if she would help damage control, even though Minty was the one who was wronged in this situation. Belle's reaction to public scrutiny for something she had done was to try and ignore it exists and privately contacted people to stop them talking about it, which, as always, led to the Streisand effect, a somewhat common theme with literally every story we talk about. In an exchange with a person on Facebook named Katerina Moon, Belle had reached out to try and squash the story at its source. She had immediately told this person she was going to contact everyone who was publicly talking about it to explain what had actually happened. In early January, this person released a post on Facebook containing a lengthy expose piece and accompanying screenshots between her and Belle, as well as the screenshots Bell had shared. Indigo's video would encapsulate the saga and was pretty accurate when it came to describing the incident involving Minty and the criticism throughout was reasonably fair. There was just one point within her video that wasn't as strong 
and didn't have much substance. Um, this is also an allegation that I have not seen proof of yet. However, I would like to just add it in here because I heard it and I saw people talking about it. But apparently some of the other girl's nudes that she solicited during that time period were also underage. So I don't know if there's proof of that. If anyone has any proof of that, I would love to see it. Um, but I thought I would mention it. Like I thought I should just put that in there in case there was any confirmation because that was like kind of early days of the drama. But yeah, I haven't had, no, no, zero, zero. I think that's complete bullshit. I was just trying to include like all of the claims that I had seen because I had like, I was trying to like do as much research as possible. And I kept seeing like a bunch of like different people claiming that. So I was like, if there's this many people claiming it, maybe I should throw it in just to see if anyone reaches out or anything. But no, I think she really was just mostly taking advantage of like sex workers and stuff. I think that's like the main issue. The effect of this rumor was amplified mid last year. A thread on Twitter which received over 85,000 likes stated Belle had actually stolen nudes from underage girls. And she had also sold her own when she was underage too. Basically, this person alleged Bell had distributed child abuse imagery and those who followed her were going to be blocked. The thread goes on to list a few different things we'll get to later, and it also links some posts on forum sites as proof of these allegations. Unfortunately, one of them has been taken down. Someone like tagged me on that and that's where I saw it and I was just like, she didn't steal underage nudes. From this thread, a victim supposedly reached out telling the author Bell had stolen their nudes and they were going to compile evidence of this. The only problem here is this is a completely separate allegation from what had happened with Minty. This person is stating Belle had been selling their nudes from when the allegations first appeared, which would be the turn of 2019, a whole year after the catfishing occurred. So either this person was lying or Belle had engaged in stealing nudes to sell once she had gained popularity. What I find hard to believe is why she would even bother. Belle turned 18 on the 23rd of October 2017. So by the time these allegations came out, she was already 18. In fact, she would have turned 18 during the time of the catfishing as seen in the screenshots. It just doesn't add up. I don't see how there would be incentive or need to steal nudes when she could legally sell her own. There is no substantial evidence for these types of claims to be made. What's more is it's embarrassing that people cited as evidence have to come out and correct the record. There is clear proof Belle was involved with the catfishing scheme and tried to bury the situation through any means possible. Minty is proof this happened and the situation between them has been dealt with. But the fact these allegations with no credible evidence blew up is rather disappointing. The evidence was circumstantial. Because she had done it before doesn't necessarily mean she'd done it again, and the flaws were exposed by the people who were cited as sources. Until someone comes forward with legitimate receipts, this is nothing but a dry and stale rumour, and it shouldn't be spread as irresponsibly as it has, because at the end of the day, it's just making it hard for people to trust the stories which may come forward. Now, other than the catfishing scandal, there hasn't been any proof of Belle doing anything morally divergent since. Her stunts attract controversy, but they don't necessarily harm anyone to the point it's an issue. So it would seem her track record since has been clean, and she's learned how to be an accountable personality. Or maybe not. Take this tweet from the 22nd of October last year. An artist by the name of Trebuzet revealed they had drawn fan art of Belle Delphine, and to their surprise, found this work used on products Belle was selling. The collectible cards featured interesting pictures of Belle on the front, and then on the back, you can see this art very much plastered in the bottom right section of the card with minimal transformation. This tweet garnered more than 4,500 likes, and many comments of support for Trebuzet mostly denouncing what Belle had done. However, other than that, nothing really came from this tweet, until 19 days later. Trebuzet released another tweet on the 10th of November which revealed a DM they had received from Belle. Within, she would claim she had no idea how to fix the situation and she did not deliberately take the art and not give proper credit. She then goes on to give a reason for why she took the art from Google and then claimed she was just essentially being lazy 
kind of rings a bell. It appears to be an opening for conversation, and once Trebuzet replied, they would be able to sort out this issue and come to some sort of agreement over what happens next. Preferably, you'd expect Trebuzet to receive a portion of the income from the use of the image, maybe a few hundred dollars or whatever fee they would agree is fair. At the very least, you would expect some sort of credit or promotion, be it a like or retweet of their work, or even an image credit on the product. Whatever they settled with would have most likely been handled in private. However, I reached out to this artist on Insta and asked them about the experience they had with Bell and if they had come to a happy conclusion. Well, it turns out the second tweet was actually because she didn't respond any further. The original screenshot didn't show a date, so it could be assumed that Bell had seen it after 19 days and then offered her apology. I asked Trebuzet for a new screenshot, and it shows Belle responding pretty much shortly after the tweet was released. She was onto the problem right away and tried her best to shut it down, but that was all she did. Trebuzet tweeted us out not because Belle had sent them the message, but because she hadn't done anything. Trebuzet shared another tweet with me one claiming Bell had done this before. So in the spirit of this investigation, I deployed Bill Baines to go and find out what this person knows. He reached out both in the replies and through DMs, and the response he received was a nice block. I don't think they have any proof of this, and I think this is just a rumor rather than a fact. However, later on, someone else would actually respond to Bill and give examples of where Bell had taken art and traced over it. What's more is they shared a picture of Bell's collaboration with Ghost Keyboards, the same brand that worked with PewDiePie, and pointed out a design used on the spacebar. Now, this design upon close inspection is similar to what Trebuzet had drawn, but I don't believe it's a copy. It would be pretty hard to say every depiction of Bell making the Ahegoa expression was a rip from Trebuzet, so I'm pretty sure this is just an unfortunate coincidence. But when it comes to the other drawings, it's evident Bell had traced them and changed the colouring. In this situation, the use differs because it's just a gimmick rather than an actual product she was selling. These were sent to Willany in H3H3 as part of her mystery package dump. Should we try the Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, deal, we'll, we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with, oh, what? <laughs> Is that a Belle Delphine original? That's pretty twisted. Becoming Belle Delphine, painted by me. Ah, some original art. So after some extensive reverse image searching, the picture with the girl pointing the gun is from the anime called Nichijo, but the one with the knife was a little harder to pinpoint. The best I found was a post on Pixiv from the user Yuki, and I think the image is a depiction of someone else's character. My eyes were bleeding after searching the site, so I promptly ceased my efforts, but Belle clearly took this art, however I don't believe it could be considered stolen. It was more remediated for her stunt, which leads back to Trebuzet. Unlike with the catfishing situation, I don't think Belle intended to steal the art from Trebuzet although her response to doing so echoed the way she had acted the year before. Instead of publicly apologizing or even acknowledging what she had done, she took it to the DMs. However, she didn't go beyond apologizing and didn't give Trebuzet anything for using the artwork on her products. It would have been the decent thing to do. Now, Trebuzet's drawing was fan art of a Belle Delphine photo. As you can see, the resemblance is pretty much identical. So it kind of hits a grey area when it comes to copyright. I asked Shannon for her thoughts as an artist, and she made the point Trebuzet had put the work into remediating the photograph. So at the very least, they should be compensated for that work. Even at the very least, just some recognition. It's not that hard to do. This behaviour fuels the reaction to what she does, and the acceptance of the more unsubstantiated claims made against her. It also strengthens others' criticism, such as the way she presents herself and what she does for content. Indigo White made it very clear she doesn't think Belle is in any way a representation of the sex work community after she had used it as a way of achieving success. It makes me sad seeing all the porn stars and all the cam girls in her comments just sucking her dick so hard. And, you know, she does not think of you as equals. She looks down on you, as you can tell by this comment, which is so ironic considering there are leaked nudes of her that she's posted and she's literally stealing everything that porn stars do, the whole premium Snapchat, like 
selling lewd things on Patreon. Th these are things that porn stars and cam girls do, you know, and she's just trying to profit off of that while not actually offering the services. I don't actually think that was her intention. It just really came off that way. Um, and I think... I think I've got a little triggered. Whether or not she truly disparages those in the adult industry is locked away in her mind. But it's not unreasonable to conclude she had used the tropes of the industry to build a character and platform. Honestly, it's kind of like a tale as old as time. Like, as long as sex work has existed, there's always been actors out there using characteristics of sex workers to, like, stir up mainstream audiences because, like, that stuff is super taboo for normal people, I guess. And, uh, like, even seeing a slight glimpse into that world is just, like, crazy for them. So anyone who's, like, more of, like, a mainstream person doing that is gonna get so much attention. Because, like, actual sex workers most of them don't get any type of mainstream attention. Like, they just kind of pretend we don't exist. Like, the bathwater thing, for, for example. Like, that's been a thing for so long. Like, that's been a thing for years before she ever came around. She used that, and, like, it's brilliant. Like, it is a really good thing. It sells really well. Like, sex workers have been doing it forever for a reason. But people who have never heard of that are just like, what? That's crazy. Oh, my God. So, you know, that's going to get tons of attention. This does give merit to the offence taken by those who do it for a living and have seen Belle capitalise from doing what they do, whilst distancing herself from acknowledging it as her image. She's using it as a vehicle to progress beyond it, and her comments suggest she doesn't see the industry as being a viable way to secure her future. I respect that. Um, at the same time, it just shows how little you respect the industry that you've infiltrated and uh, made a mockery of because it feels like especially her like uh like her very early content felt like it was kind of just like kind of it was almost like a caricature of sex workers and um she's toned that down because she actually makes porn now i think she's embraced that she actually does have to do that because she was scamming people by not posting on her patreon or giving them what they asked for i want her to stop feeling like she's above it because she's not. She's a whore like the rest of us at this point. Belle's influencer status puts her in an interesting position, and Indigo thinks she could be a good representation for the industry if she decided to communicate with those within. I feel like she honestly could be. Like, if she could just talk to more sex work and, like, take in the criticisms that we have for her, like, I think she actually could be, like, a huge bonus because, you know, like, she is really funny. And she's a really good marketer and like she's cute and like she has like a really good thing going on and so like i think if she could just tidy it up and kind of follow like the rules of etiquette that we do which is like heavily mark our stuff 18 plus like try to really limit kids on our accounts like when we're posting like hardcore stuff like we make sure people are aware of that or like if she learned to care about that, like, she could be a really good, like, positive thing for the community, but I just, I don't think she cares. So I don't think that's gonna happen, because I think she's kind of selfish. Sometimes being selfish is essential for online success, and Belle's ignorance towards the adult industry and its communities could be her way of staying in the mainstream. Her image is all she cares for, and as long as she is seen as a divergent character by most, the act will stay relevant. The audience and attention this receives brings us to a point of criticism very nuanced, although rather important to discuss. I'm going to try my best to find a reasonable explanation for the criticism regarding her content, and by proxy, those who associate with her. So, Belle's termination in November led to many large creators coming to her defense because her channel was taken down for content similar, if not identical, to mainstream celebrities. In fact, Lord Vega managed to put together a side-by-side -side comparison which could be credited with making YouTube reverse their decision. People came together because holding YouTube accountable is just as important as holding the creators accountable, which is why most people rallied behind Bell. However, people began accusing those who called out YouTube's double standard of supporting pedophilia 
because apparently Belle's content caters to those who are attracted to children. Belle has stated multiple times that she is into dominant submissive stuff and she's like really into that stuff and she's a submissive. They're just really in tune with that side of themselves. This is my jumpers. And this is a Tangled. <laughs> All right, someone's gonna have to explain this to me. And I'm sorry if uh, any of you are Belle Delphine simps out there. Does she not, okay, does she not have the mannerisms of a child? Doing stuff like he he and saying, this is my jumpers. I know she corrected it in post, doesn't count, speak English. I just don't really understand how people can find those kind of mannerisms attractive. It doesn't bother me at all. Like I don't get, I don't get weird vibes from that at all. Maybe I'm biased. Cause like, I just act like that too. <laughs> Like, I'll just be cooking, like, and I'll drop something and I'll, like, squeal or something. It's just kind of, I don't know. Some people just have mannerisms like that. I don't know. I think if people are fetishizing that, it's a little weird, you know? Um, there's a difference between being like, oh, that's, that's funny. Um, and being like, oh my god, it makes me want to fuck her. This notion of her intent to attract bad actors was very noticeable when she got to trouble for her kidnap photo set. Many tweets suggested her content focuses on bringing in the creeps and those who follow her should be on government watch lists. I think that's dumb. I think that society in general uh, likes to shit on girls who are excessively girly because I get comments like that a lot too. I don't like when people infantilize adults because that's not fair and it also like, I don't think these people that say that understand how pedophiles work. Pedophiles are into children because they are children. They're not into adults that look like children or are into childish things. They're into children because of the fact that they are not fully developed because they're a child. There's of course nuance to this topic and it's really something for debate rather than there being a correct side to support. However, reading the opinions from tweets doesn't quite allow for an understanding of this idea. So I did some skimming on Google and found an interesting critique of Belle's content from Women's Republic. The author describes how Belle presents herself. Belle Delphine's image centers around the aesthetic of a child. She works hard to frame herself as pedobait or underaged but still sexy. Belle often includes children's toys or stuffed animals as props in the background of photos of her performing highly sexualized acts. It also goes on to describe the e-girl aesthetic itself, which has taken tropes from anime and manga culture and the way the female characters are depicted. What raises controversy is the links to hentai and further lowly, which is considered child abuse imagery in countries like the UK and Australia. It's undeniable Belle is involved in this culture. She doesn't hide it and also includes it as part of her character. But the same can be said for a lot of people in the adult industry. And it's because the idea of a cute girl is sellable. We all get criticism like that just because like we like to be cute. And I think that's kind of dumb. Like a lot of us didn't get to enjoy our childhoods. So it's a way of reclaiming that. Like, I just don't feel like it's anyone's right to judge that. One thing not spoken of more is the status of Belle as an influencer and the fact she often engages with creators who may have audiences not suitable for what Belle does. Like I'm fully an adult creator, but like sometimes I cross over into just being like a normal like influencer type creator. And she like even more crosses that line over, but people aren't using me for clickbait and like getting people to go look me up and stuff. She could do better about being like explicit about not allowing them for sure. And like when she sees people like tagging her and stuff that our kids like block them like any responsible adult would. But at the same time, like she has a lot of followers. She should really be hiring someone to do that. If anything, they should critique her for not like marking her account as explicit. I can understand why there's a debate over her assumed intentions, but unless she comes forward and admits it herself, it's just speculation. Agreeing with the criticism is also dependent on your opinion of this content and the e-girl trend itself. This debate goes beyond Belle, and although she definitely capitalizes from it, it's more a social issue than a Belle issue. So it's safe to say 23 year old Josh isn't gonna be on any government watch list for shifting a few bucks to Belle Delphine's OnlyFans every month. That's a bit of an over exaggeration. I would probably be a lot less harsh on her. I think I'd try to be a lot more understanding of like where she's coming from. I, I feel like I was like pretty harsh on her in that video. 
you know, I brought up every single claim that was possibly out there against her. And I probably would just focus on the Minty thing. Having an opinion about Belle Delphine for her content is purely dependent on what you personally enjoy. It's fair to criticize her for it, but to take it further and condemn her because of it is a strange form of moral high grounding. I think Indigo's distrust has merit based on the fact she is part of the community Belle based her character on, but for others, it's kind of based on speculation and rumors. I really just wish she would reach out to some of her actual critics. You know, not the ones that are just like hating on her for the sake of it or like whatever, but the ones that like, you know, genuinely just want her to do better for sex work in general because she's like unintentionally the face of it right now for a lot of people. I just wish she would understand the position that she's in and do good with it. For a good majority, she's been villainized for some things very hard to prove and often people misrepresent the things she's actually done, which lead to the story being misconstrued further. It's obvious she is very focused on her image, which is ironic because of how controversial she is, but I don't think she realizes people can be forgiving. Her fans won't really care if she addresses these kinds of things, and I think most reasonable people will hear her out and come away with a fair opinion. She made comments about wanting people to like her, so I think she needs to be more open and I know she has in other ways, but I mean in a communication kind of way. Transparency can go a long way in attracting admiration from even the most staunch of critics. There will always be those who are unreasonable, but ignoring them and taking a step forward will more than likely be better for the long run. It's clear then that there's validity to the distrust of Belle as an influencer, and the criticism towards her does have merit. Her refusal to address certain controversies and trying to shut them down in private is counterintuitive to what she wants to happen. As a person, I don't think she's a sinister character like other figures online, but she definitely needs to work on how she responds to legitimate criticism because then there wouldn't be any doubts over her character. Everything we've discussed is as accurate as can possibly be without talking to Belle or the person who has the other side of the story. Belle needs to address certain unresolved issues and others need to make sure they aren't spreading unsubstantiated allegations. Unless it's revealed she's done something more deplorable, at this point in time, there's no need to try and destroy her character. But of course, keep her accountable because when the time comes, it's important we are fair and accurate with our criticism. I've been BWC. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Goodbye.